It was certainly a volatile day in markets today, and for good reason. There was a lot of volatility that occurred today, as there have been for the last several weeks and possibly even several months. Let's break down the causes of this volatility because there is some irrationality that seems to be occurring, and we want to be ahead of that irrationality and remain rational, focused on the fundamentals, and properly positioned. So we had a rise in energy today. I think we all know the forces behind that. The pre-existing supply deficit, coupled with the Russia tensions, and you get several days of massive increases in the price of oil. Today we saw meaningful changes in our energy policy. One, banning the imports of Russian products. Now on the surface, this doesn't have much of an effect. The United States is currently picking up production. We produce most of our energy in-house. Russian oil is not very important. What is important is Russian oil to Europe, and even more important than that, because at least today, is the Russian response, which is still unclear. What was the Russian response? Halting all imports and exports until 2023. I was... Previously, under the impression this would not happen, that Russia would continue to supply Europe with their products. And it's still unclear whether they mean natural gas and oil. If they completely cut, shut off Russian natural gas and oil, we've got a problem. This was a very retaliatory attack. And if that's the case, it seems to be flying under the radar. The market seems to be not pricing it in. So we'll see what happens with that. If Russian oil is completely taken off from the foreign markets, we have quite a situation on our hands. This is not just the United States banning uh, imports. That's not really a big deal. But Russia's re response seems to be the rest of the world can't get our stuff. And that invites a whole new level of problems and conflict. So we're certainly going to be watching that and seeing that how that develops. That's kind of a fresh thing. I'm not seeing a market reaction in it. Maybe I'm wrong in my interpretation of what they said. Because um, that is quite drastic. That shows a willingness of them to tank their economy, essentially, in order to get their way. Which it seemed we were getting some progress on. That... Ukraine was willing to back off from NATO. That was, in my opinion, Russia's main demand going into this for years prior. But now we see Poland supplying Ukraine with planes. Well, that's certainly going to upset the Russians. So the energy situation is not looking pretty. And there's still a lot of unknowns, but it's rising for now. However, how am I treating it? Well, before the United States decided to put that Russia uh, import ban on, I continued to trim a little bit of my positions. I trimmed a good amount yesterday. Um, and why is that? Doesn't it seem like we're in a Goldilocks situation for energy? Yes and no. Yes, in the short term, we are in a Goldilocks situation. However, as the saying goes, the cure for high energy prices, thank you, Steph, for the comment. I, pre I appreciate it. The cure for higher energy prices is higher energy prices. That is a saying, and it's possible that comes to fruition. We've seen that be the case in multiple commodities throughout the last year or two. Uh, we saw that in lumber. Lumber prices had fallen after reaching a quite monstrous peak, and it was quite an aggressive decline. I'm not saying that's going to exist with energy because we do have, prior to the Russia-Ukraine tensions, a supply deficit. However, it seems that the talk is everyone's trying to make a quick change to renewables. Germany saying we're going to go at Tesla speed to transition to renewables. They recently approved the Tesla Gigafactory in Berlin. That was held up for some time. Not only did they just approve it after being holding it up for some time, but they say they're going to change their entire energy structure to moving in Tesla time. So that is one thing to consider. Another thing to consider is demand destruction. This is a uh, popular phenomenon 
We see the airlines now taking off 5% of their flights because the price of oil has gone up. Airlines are not the only consumer of oil, but they are a meaningfully significant, um, a meaning, uh, you're, a meaningfully significant uh, a sector of energy consumption. And uh, to address Stefan's comment, if you just saw, what is my timeline on a bear situation for oil? It's very difficult to predict an actual timeline right now. I'm not ready to commit to a timeline. So what I'm doing is I've simply got massive gains. We've had a massive run. This was not necessarily expected, this tremendously quick move. Um, so I'm realizing some gains and have realized some gains prior to today. This morning before the announcement, realized a little bit, but I did uh, more selling yesterday. And I've taken my energy position down about 50%. So I'm not necessarily bearish on energy. Um, I definitely think this is a year, two year long bull market for energy. But given the move that we've seen um, and the forces, the cure for higher energy prices being higher energy prices, I think it's uh, warranted to take some off the table. So I've done that. I think that's a pretty good move. Um, and that's energy. I just wanna make one last comment that we made yesterday. Every time energy, or oil rather, has increased 50%, and we've done that in a tremendously quick amount of time, there's been a recession. It's unclear if there's going to be a recession, but there's certainly a case for there to be a recession. If energy and oil and gas, etc., takes up a larger and larger share of the wallet, well, then all of a sudden, we have less money to spend on other goods, and we see a decrease in those goods, we see a decrease in GDP, and all of a sudden you get two quarters of GDP decre decrease and you have a recession. So that's certainly on the table. In addition, we're seeing wages flatten. That was definitely a uh, that was definitely a uh, good thing previously. We liked seeing wages increase, but it was leading to inflation. Now all of a sudden we've got wages flattening out. Maybe that's good for inflation, but I don't think it's going to appear in the numbers because we are still having these energy increases which are trickling out to the rest of the economy. So we have rising prices, we have the same amount of production because only prices are rising and wages are flattening out. That uh, could add to the picture of there being recession. Stefan just commented on $185 barrel oil and massive gains. Certainly possible, certainly possible. We continue to see a rise in the price per barrel of oil, but we've seen a quite significant move thus far and I'm taking some off the table. I think that's prudent. Um, it's possible we continue to run and maybe it would have been better to hold those positions, but there is a lot of unknown going forward. It's not the simple supply demand imbalance that we had one, two months ago. Now we have a completely different situation. And because of that, I'm taking some of those gains and redeploying some of that cash elsewhere. And I'll get to that in a second. So certainly possible we continue to see energy rise I'm having sold all my positions. I'm not going short energy. I've got 50% of what was my previously massive energy position that grew quite massive. Just locking some gains there and still uh, remaining optimistic on the prospects for energy stocks. But there's other stocks that are presenting tremendous value that are also down quite big. We talked about yesterday how a lot of these 10X growth stocks I like looked like they were hitting rock bottom. I believe the names from yesterday were CRISPR Therapeutics, Smile Direct Club, 23andMe, etc. When the NASDAQ was down, the market was down, these stocks were up. Um, they've obviously had massive drawdowns from their previous highs. And that indicates to me that there might be signs of a bottom. They're now below pre-pandemic levels, despite benefiting from pandemic-related fundamentals, particularly around healthcare, biopharmaceuticals, etc. Just growth that has occurred in the company. So maybe those companies are hitting rock bottom. And I would like to get ahead of the rally. Energy has certainly had a rally. I've certainly seen tremendous gains in those stocks. I think it's just prudent capital allocation to take money from there, redeploy it into what could possibly be the next phase of growth, uh, at least in terms of portfolio. Obviously, the recession throws a massive monkey wrench in anything recession to possibly come. We don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, things I'm, I'm thinking about. So like energy still, 
but have reasons to be cautious and also have reasons to continue to be bullish. So adjusting the position as such. Um, and also am quite optimistic on other positions. So getting along those other positions as well and overall adopting what I think is reasonably well thought out portfolio construction. How can we navigate a recessionary environment? Because that seems to be on the table. Unlike previous recessionary environments where deflation occurred, there doesn't seem to be any sort of indication that deflation is going to occur. We're seeing rising energy prices. That triggers itself out into pretty much every area of the market and the economy because energy is the underlying uh, force behind everything. We need it for freight, transportation, electricity, etc. So I'm not under the impression that prices are going to fall, but wages seem to be flattening out. So you have to put yourself in the mind of the consumer. If your prices are going up, but your income is remaining flat, what are you going to do? You're going to look for competitive goods. We've seen troubles in car sales. Not many new cars. Okay. In previous recessions, we've seen car sales halted. So we may, might get a double whammy of these, these new forces. Not only are consumers not buying new cars, but there are not as many new cars on the market for them to even buy. So that might mean car parts and repair companies might do well. That was the case in the previous recession. Might even be more so the case if we get a recession now. Something to think about. I'm not saying that's a guarantee. I'm currently not playing that position. But I'm trying to highlight the way of thinking going into the next possible recession. I don't have any sort of specific recessionary plays. A lot of the ones I like, Walmart, Dollar Tree, etc., are a little too expensive for me at this point. But I do have um, longer term, now in the money, but I bought them out of the money, SPY puts. Those have done well, and I have those as more of a reflation case hedge to hopefully raise some cash to buy other positions. Ultimately, I like the market. I want to be a participant in the market. I think there are good values now. And if there's a downturn in the market, I think there will be good values around. So want to participate in those. Yes, energy was certainly a good value, is likely still a good value, and may continue to be a good value in the future, but has had a tremendous gain. So I've locked in some of that gain. And there's other stocks that I think are down quite significantly. Today I bought some Meta, down quite significantly. There are other positions as well that are well-priced. Um, Intel, we've talked about that in previous videos. So we're buying stocks at a reasonable price, um, but we're also cautious about things that might happen. I haven't deployed all my cash. I'm sitting about a 10% cash position, which is quite large for me. Um, but in times like this, 10% cash I think is reasonable. Um, and we'll see what happens. Ultimately, there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of things that can happen in the bullish sense for energy. And there's a lot of more bearish things that can happen possibly for the broader economy as energy prices rise and wages stay flat, but prices keep going up. There's been a stagflation worry and concern in the market that has been quite broad. Um, and now we're here to see if it plays out. As of today, it looks like it can play out. Um, but to get that extremely bearish, uh, we don't have the economic indicators of that yet. We'll see how that starts to pour out over the next coming weeks and months though. Broad picture um, for today, uh, we're mostly invested, but we're very strategic given the unknowns and we're playing what can be an uncertain environment in a relatively certain way, focusing on price, value, product, and earnings above all, and outlining possible scenarios that these companies can do well in, in specific scenarios. So even a company like Intel, which has uh, quite interesting exposure, quite broad exposure, might do well in a worst case scenario where China gets involved because it is very much a US company and is building US foundries, that might benefit from a situation like that. So in my opinion, we'll see what happens. Anyways, that's today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, peace out.